Hello everybody, welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School. My name is Mike Thompson. This is part two of the turning tendencies. Remember there's four turning tendencies. We didn't specify left or right. And we've already talked about the first two, torque and asymmetrical thrust. Now in the 172S model and in most single engine general aviation airplanes and the propeller is turning clockwise from my view of it from the cockpit as a pilot, those tendencies will turn me to the left. We have two more to talk about. That is the spiraling slipstream and gyroscopic precession. A spiraling slipstream, once again, exactly was it, what it says it is. And if we take those two words, spiraling and slipstream, and let's flip them, it really is a slipstream coming off the propeller, spiraling around my airframe. Now, have a look at this diagram. This shows the propeller causing the wind coming off the propeller to spiral around that aircraft. Now the propeller's turning clockwise, the wind coming off of it is being spiraled clockwise, comes around the airplane and eventually hits the left side of that vertical stabilizer. As it hits the left side of that vertical stabilizer, the tail of the airplane comes to the right, pushing the nose of the airplane to the left. And that's a left yawing or left turning tendency, spiraling slipstream. And the fourth of our turning tendencies is called gyroscopic precession. Now, to understand gyroscopic precession and how it affects my airplane, we first have to understand the gyroscopes. You recall that if we take a disc and we spin it very rapidly, it will maintain rigidity in space. It's just like the toy top that we played with as children, or maybe you have one of those little spinners, or maybe you have a bicycle wheel on an axle and you can spin it real fast. You notice once you spin it, it tends to hold its position. That's rigidity in space. The second principle is called precession. If I have this spinning disc, like my bike tire, and it's spinning clockwise, like this, and I put pressure up here at 12 o'clock, that pressure will act 90 degrees in the direction of rotation, and act at three o'clock and pull that disc to the left. Same way, if I'm spinning this bicycle tire clockwise, as I view it, and I put pressure at six o'clock, it'll go 90 degrees in direction of rotation, and it'll act at nine o'clock and pull me to the right. So gyroscopic precession acts 90 degrees in the direction of rotation from where the force was applied. Now, how does that affect me and my airplane? If I'm rolling down the runway in a nose wheel airplane, and my clock is, my, my clock, my propeller is spinning clockwise as I view it from the cockpit and I pull back on my yoke and rotate, that introduces a force at six o'clock on that propeller disc. That force comes 90 degrees in the direction of rotation, acts at nine o'clock and actually pulls me to the right. That's why, didn't we, that's why we did not name these left or right turning tendencies. These are turning tendencies. And in this case, this one's actually pulling me to the right. How come we don't notice it when we take off with our flight instructor? Well, two reasons. First of all, that precession is temporary. 
the disc has rigidity and space while I'm rolling down the runway, and it has rigidity and space during the climb. The only time I notice the precession is when I move this propeller disc from the runway to the climb attitude. So that gyroscopic processive force is temporary. The second reason is because it is relatively weaker than some of those stronger left turning tendencies. And that's why I don't really notice it. Now, take a look at this diagram. Here we're depicting a tailwheel airplane. Now, if you haven't done any tailwheel flying, that's something you might want to do later in your career. But if you take a good look at it, the tail is down, the nose is up, and the propeller disc is pitched up slightly. Now, in a tailwheel airplane, as we gain RPM and start to roll down the runway, one of the first things we do is move the stick forward to put the aircraft in a level attitude prior to rotating off the runway. Now, when we put that stick forward, the force is being applied at 12 o'clock on that propeller disc. The processive force causes it to act at three o'clock. So a tailwheel airplane lifting its tailwheel will have a left yawing tendency on the runway while the tail is coming up. These are our four forces. Torque, asymmetrical thrust, spiraling slipstream, and gyroscopic precession. Here's a lesson, uh, here's a question to end this quick lesson with. Uh, when it comes to gyroscopes, what are the two main principles that we have to remember with gyroscopes? Well, folks, that's it for this session. We'll see you next time.